Hi, my name is Mark Green. I'm the author of the Little Me Too book for men. In this video, we're going to talk about man box culture. What I'm talking about is our collective agreement on how we perform or do manhood. Culture is our everyday utterances, actions, relationships, our smallest to our largest gestures. They all make up culture. Culture is also our laws, our policies, our institutions, and it is in the small daily interactions of culture that we ultimately arrive at the larger institutional manifestations of it. Culture is not static. Culture is not singular. In fact, we are impacted by a range of different cultures that, that are intersecting. So you have religious cultures, you have regional cultures, you have gender cultures, you have political cultures, you have work-related cultures. You have microcultures, the culture of your own family, the culture of your own neighborhood. All of these cultures represent agreed upon sets of expectations and rules by which we operate. The man box culture of masculinity, our dominant culture of masculinity, is just another set of agreements. Culture is defined by and created by all of us. Some of us have more power in those conversations, some of us have more agency, but ultimately it's a question of numbers. If enough people decide that a culture needs to change or shift, it does. So for us, when we talk about a culture of masculinity versus individual masculine identity, what we're talking about is our collective agency to create change. The challenge here is that if we choose not to talk about culture, we're left only with a conversation about identity. So when we talk about something like toxic masculinity, instead of toxic culture of masculinity, individual men may take that as a critique of their own identity. And there's a reason for this. Remember, the first rule of man box culture is don't show your emotions. So when we talk about hiding our emotions, what we're talking about is hiding our authentic response to the world we live in. In that moment, we are eliminating any possibility of self-reflection because self-reflection is done in relationship with other people. And it is only through self-reflection that we can learn that the process of exploring identity is not an attack on identity. It is the raising of questions about how we arrived at our identity. Look, I completely agree that some men are just argumentative around the question of identity. They just don't feel like they should be answerable to anyone. I fully understand that for some men, a conversation about toxic masculinity is not threatening to them at all that they understand that toxic modifies the word masculinity just like healthy can modify the word masculinity. But for some men, a conversation about masculinity that can be inferred to reflect on personal identity can be hugely challenging because man box culture is a culture of conformity around a very narrow set of ideas about what manhood is. And the way that young boys are conditioned to conform to these ideas is through daily, even hourly, policing, bullying, and violence. This process of bullying and policing goes on for men all their lives, starting when they're very young children. So when we speak in ways that imply men's individual masculine identities are flawed in some way, we're dipping into a river of ongoing trauma around the question of performing identity. It's the trauma of being assaulted over and over and over again until we hide everything authentic about ourselves and take on a version of masculinity which in many cases is antithetical to our core sense of self. Niobe Way says that when you tell a boy to hide his emotions, essentially telling him to be invulnerable, that this is traumatizing and that everything else that we are challenged by in manhood comes out of that. Because for many men, Getting to a place where they perform masculine identity in an acceptable fashion included a traumatic process of stripping away many authentic parts of themselves. And so when we have a conversation that talks about masculine culture, we create a little breathing room for men who have been policed brutally all their lives around the question of identity, who are still being policed around the question of identity not only by the men in their lives, but very likely by the women as well. When we talk about toxic culture of masculinity, when we talk about man box culture, when we put the focus on the overarching agreements that both men and women have made to define masculinity, 
then we can begin to have a conversation that creates agency and empowerment for people to make the small and large shifts daily in terms of how that culture operates. Additionally, we create a doorway that men can step through and begin to self-reflect in terms of what they have been taught. Because when we talk about culture as forming masculinity instead of masculinity itself as being flawed, we give men the breathing space they need to begin to self-reflect.